In today's wrap-up, Armenia Soldiers Fund has raised more money in the last 10 days than in the last three years. New solar power stations are planned for the Noyemberian region. The new Cups Reservoir is set to increase Armenia's domestic electricity production. 308 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed. And Armenian Defence Minister David Tonoyan has met with the Russian and French ambassadors. Armenia Soldiers Insurance Fund has received more donations in the last 10 days than in the last three years. In the last three years, the vast majority of the funds came from Armenia, with very little being donated by the diaspora. 308 million drums were raised in the last three years, whilst between July 17th to 27th, 304 million drums were raised, 182 million drums of which came from Armenia. The amount coming from the diaspora has significantly increased, with 96.2 million drums coming from the US. The director of the foundation, Varujan Afetikian, told Civilnet that his strategic goal is to compensate the families of the victims of armed conflict in Armenia, as well as provide assistance to the injured. Armenia's Ministry of Territorial Administration and Infrastructures has announced plans to install new solar power stations in the town of Noyemberian in the northeastern region of Tavush. One of the stations is already complete, with a further four due to be ready by September. Funds will be coming from US aid and should save Noyemberian around 5 million drums a year, as well as reducing its dependence on imported energy. Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan held a meeting on July 28 to discuss the construction of a new reservoir in Armenia. The Cups reservoir will cost around 60 million euros and will be implemented in cooperation with the German Bank for Reconstruction and Development. The reservoir, which will include a 51-meter-long dam, will provide Armenia with 1.3 kilowatts of electricity a year, reducing energy import dependence. The project is scheduled to start in 2021 and will be complete in around three and a half years. Pashinyan said during the meeting that all efforts must be made to protect Armenia's water resources during construction. At the moment, the reservoir is a frozen project in the region of Shirak. Construction started in 1985 but was halted in 1993, partly due to the 1988 earthquake. Health authorities in Armenia have confirmed 308 new cases of COVID-19, raising the total number of cases to 37,937. 467 recoveries were also reported and four more deaths, raising the death toll to 723. 11 new cases of COVID-19 have also been confirmed in Nagorno-Karabakh, raising the total there to 228. Armenia's military leadership has held meetings with the Russian, French and US ambassadors, the co-chair countries of the OSCE Minsk Group. On July 28th, Defence Minister David Tonoyan met with the Russian ambassador Sergei Kopirkin. They discussed bilateral military cooperation as well as the current clashes with Azerbaijan. Tonoyan emphasised the constructive and stabilising role Russia plays in this regard. Ambassador Kopirkin reaffirmed that Russia is taking all possible steps to ensure the easing of tensions. They also discussed joint combat training and military exercises to be held in Armenia and Russia. The following day, Tonoyan met with the French ambassador to discuss the skirmishes. Meanwhile, the Army Chief of General Staff, Onik Gasparian, met with the US Ambassador Lynn Tracy. They also discussed the tensions on the border in Tavush. According to the United Nations Population Fund of Armenia, in the last 25 years, 40,000 girls were not born in the country due to sex-selective abortions. In light of the recent UN She Counts campaign, which seeks to end sex-selective abortions, Sivonets Ani Paitian spoke to two families with multiple female children to see what they think about the phenomenon, as well as how the UNFPA aims to stamp out this practice. And finally, Sivonets Arshalus Mekhdesian spoke to the High Commissioner for Diaspora Affairs of Armenia and former mayor of Glendale, Zare Sinanyan. They spoke about the clashes between Armenians and Azerbaijanis in foreign countries, the controversial statements made by Russia Today chief Margarita Simonyan, as well as the repatriation of diasporans to Armenia.